solve the matrix equation AX equals B for X. These are matrices. They're not real numbers. If these were real numbers, we would just divide by A. Just make sure the A is not a zero. But these are matrices, so we have to go about it a different way. We still have to cancel this A, but we can't cancel it by dividing by an A, since there's no matrix division. So here's your matrix A, here's your matrix B. We're going to put the A here and the B here. Set up the matrix in the form AX equals B. So here they are, the matrices that they gave us. They told us this was A and this was B. So this is what it looks like. Now I need to get this one canceled out and on the other side. But I can't divide. Since these are not real numbers or matrices, you have to go about it a different way. So what I need to do is multiply this side of the equation by the inverse of this matrix. And since I multiplied on the left of this side of the equation, I have to multiply on the left of this side of the equation. So I'm going to multiply this side by the inverse and do the same thing here. That inverse that's over here, I have to put it over here. Since what you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do it to the other. So here it is. Here's the symbol telling us that we're finding the inverse for this matrix. So I multiplied on this side by the inverse of this matrix. I have to multiply this side, the left of this matrix, by that same inverse. Notice these are the same. What you do to one side, you do to the other. This, when you multiply it, gives you the identity. It's like a 1. So it's like 1 times this matrix gives you this matrix, but we don't say when we 1, we say identity. So this is a 1 which is the identity. So the identity times this matrix is this matrix. And so this is what we have so far. Most of our work would be finding this inverse. So we need to find out what this inverse is and then plug it in here and continue with the multiplication. We're going to use row operations. So we're going to find the inverse for this matrix. So what you do is you write this matrix in augmented form, which means you copy it, put this vertical bar, and then put its matching identity. Notice what the identity looks like. The identity always has ones along the main diagonal and zeros on the diagonal elements. This whole thing is called the augmented matrix. So what we're going to do using row operations is change this one to the identity. So this one's going to be looking like this one when we're done. Then this one would change into the inverse. So the inverse is going to appear here after this one has been transformed into the identity. And we use operations for that. So I slide this row over, I slide this over, I go column by column, adding like terms, and notice I get the zero right where I need it. This cancel, these two cancel, give me a zero. This one's going to replace row two. So this is going to go right here. So here it is. So we have our zero here. We still need a zero here, 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 and here, and one's here. But we do this one step at a time. So now I'm going to take row 1, I slide it over, I multiply it, row 3 by negative 1, and then I slide it over. And then I add column by column, collect like terms. Notice that produces a 0 where I need it. This row is going to replace row 3. Everything else stays the same. So it's replaced it, it's right here. So we have our zero here, zero here, we need a zero here. So what I'm going to do is multiply row three by a three so that when I get to this place, I'll have a negative three and plus three will give me the zero where I need it. So you slide this one over. This one you multiply times three first and then slide it over. And notice you go column by column, combine like terms, get a zero here, get a zero here. 
all of this is going to replace row 3. So this is our new row 3. There it is. Everything else stays the same. So we have these three zeros here. Now I need a zero here. So I slide this row over. And I slide this over. The second row over. But notice before I slide them over, I multiply this row by a 3. And I multiply this by a 2. So it could give me a negative 6 here and a 6 here. So I could cancel. So you multiply by the 3. Multiply by the 2. Slide them over. Combine like terms. Column by column. Gives you the zero where you need it. All this row is going to replace row one. Everything else stays the same. So here is our new row one. I need a zero here now. So this one I slide it over. I slide this one over, go column by column, adding these terms. This row is going to replace row one. But notice it has a zero where we need it. So this one goes here. Everything else stays the same. Now I need a zero here. So I'm going to slide this row over. And before I slide this one over, I'm going to multiply by a negative 4 so that I could get a zero here. So I multiply times a negative 4, row 3, slide it over, and then go column by column. This row is going to replace row 2. So there it is, it replaced row two. So we have our zeros where we need them. We just need these to be ones. To get ones here is easy. Just multiply by the reciprocal of that position that you want the one in. So I want the one here, so three times it's reciprocal. I want the one here, three times it's reciprocal. But you have to multiply the whole row by that number, one third times this whole row, one-third times this whole row. Slide it over, and notice we have the zeros where we need them. We have the ones where we need them. We have transformed the matrix that was here at the beginning to the identity. So this one is the one we call the inverse. This is the inverse. So the inverse of the matrix we were looking for is this one. Now we go back to our original equation to solve for the x matrix. This is the X matrix. Even though it says X, Y, and Z, it's the X matrix, the variable matrix. So we insert it here since we found it. Now we continue by multiplying this matrix times this matrix. Here's the multiplication step. Simplify. And this is what we have. Therefore, this means X equals 4, Y equals 12, and Z equals negative 7. This is a solution for our matrix equation.